Hello, this is Vibrational Normal Modes Part 1. We're going to be um, looking at how to calculate vibrational normal modes of molecules. We're going to take the example of water, which is, of course, H2O and has the structure like so. But before we um, get on to water, we're going to do a quick review which is going to be a diatomic. Because it's helpful to think about this just to uh, think about what we need to do. So, for the diatomic if we have two nuclei here. So for the nuclear motion in a molecule, we're thinking about how the nuclei or how the atoms move, and that's really defined by how the nuclei move. Uh, we can imagine each nucleus has got sort of motion in X, Y, and Z. And that's in X2, Y2, and Z2 there. So, um, let me make that Z clearer. So we've got our atoms 1 and 2, and each of them, let's just label those more clearly, atom 1, atom 2, and each of them can move in three dimensions, in the X, in the Y, and in the Z. So, what happens if we start putting some of these together? Because for the molecule to move, it's got these six different um, uh, motions on each of its nuclei, but to, to get uh, an idea of how the molecule moves, we need to put them together. So, if we take X1 plus X2, then uh, the molecule, let me just draw it here, is moving there and there, and what we have is a translation in X. If we have um, Y1 plus Y2 and Z1 plus Z2, we also get translations. So if uh, both nuclei are moving sort of in the positive Y direction or in the positive Z direction, then the molecule itself is moving in the Y direction or in the Z direction. And just as we saw um, here for um, uh, the translation in X, um, we um, have a... Uh, a motion uh, which is a translation if we have things going in, in the same direction. So there are three combinations where we have uh, X1 and X2 or Y1 and Y2 or Z1 and Z2 going in the same direction. If we start doing things in the opposite directions, then we have uh, X1 uh, minus X2. I'll just draw that again helpful to see what that looks like. So now atom 1 at the bottom is moving to the right, but atom 2 at the top is moving to the left. And if you think about that motion, now the bond is going to hold the thing together. So moving like that, that's actually um, a rotation in um, actually about the y-axis, so that's rotation uh, y. And similarly, if we have y1 minus y2, I'll just draw that quickly if I can. y1 is that way, sort of into the page, y2 is coming back out at us, 
and that is um, a rotation which is um, about the uh, r x axis, uh, the x axis. So that's r x. So we get two rotations. Now, if we have um, z one minus z two, now draw that here, give a bit more space so it's clearer. We have this one at the bottom moving up and this one at the top moving down. And what we will have, that will go to this and then it will spring back to there and then it will come to here and so forth. And what we will have is a, a vibration, molecular vibration. So this Z1 minus 2 is Z2 is vibration. And in general, for a linear molecule, we have 3n minus 5 uh, vibrational degrees of freedom. Uh, that is um, x, y, z on each atom or on each nucleus minus x, y, z over all translations and minus r, x and r, y. Now that's if we line the molecule up the way I have in a sort of vertical direction. Um, now, I'm just going to finish this bit with a little bit to the side here. If we have a um, nonlinear molecule, then the number is 3n minus 6 vibrational degrees of freedom, which is x, y, z on each atom, and we need to take away x, y, and z, and we also need to take away r, x, and r, y, and r, z. So in the case of linear, we're only taking two rotations away. I hope it's clear in the case of a stiatomic molecule that it has two clear rotations and one vibration when we start sort of putting the arrows in opposite directions. But in the case of a nonlinear molecule, we have three rotational degrees of freedom. So let's take um, the case of water now, but um, that's going to be in the next video. So that's at the end of part one.